Okay guys, so we're on a 2016 GMC Sierra and we're going to do a fuel uh, a fuel injector balance test using the scan tool. This is the X-Tool D8. Uh, this is the BT version, the Bluetooth version, but uh, the regular D8 will do it also. As will my launch will do this test, my Autel will do this test. And what this test does is it actually checks the fuel injectors to make sure that all of them are flowing equally or pretty close to equally uh, therefore you you'd be able to determine if you had a fuel injector that was either clogged partially clogged uh, or flowing way too much if it was just wide open and uh, you know causing your your issue so if you have like a, a rough idle or the performance sitting there you're running rich or whatever you want to verify your fuel injectors this is the test you want to do now I think a year or two ago, I did a fuel injector balance test, uh, but that was on a regular conventional injected engine. This is a direct injected engine, so we're dealing with high fuel pressures. It's a totally different setup. Luckily, GM built in a test procedure to be able to do this using the scan tool. The other video I did, and I'll link to it uh, up in the uh, upper right corner, uh, you actually connect a fuel pressure gauge to the fuel rail and you use the scan tool to energize the fuel pump and then the scan tool will pulse each injector an exact amount of time and you verify how much fuel pressure drop each injector has and that's how you do a conventional fuel injector balance test on a direct injected engine uh, it's even easier because you don't even have to pop the hood you do it all from inside the vehicle there's a little bit of math to do but uh, nothing you know n nothing that you can't do in your head um, so let's go ahead and get into this I'm gonna I'm actually gonna read the exact procedure uh, before we start there there are actually two procedures GM calls out the first one uses a uh, a dedicated Kent Moore fuel injection balance test kit. That's about a $2,500 kit. Uh, uh, your DIYer is not going to have that. Even a lot of shops probably don't have that. The dealer obviously does have it. Uh, your higher end shops would probably have it. But that's a high expense to be able to do this test, especially since you can do the same test using a scan tool. And so that's what we're going to do is the scan tool version. And like I say, this is the D8. Uh, this is the BT, but the regular D8 will do it also. So I'm just going to start from the start. Uh, the title of this test is Fuel Injector Balance Test with the Scan Tool. Oh, also, I am going to put in the description this exact procedure. So you'll have it in the description so you can print it off and actually uh, walk yourself through it. So first thing I want you to do is turn ignition on. We are on. Command the fuel pump. Uh, command the fuel pump. Enable on with the scan tool. So let's go ahead and get into the vehicle here. I actually kind of jumped the gun. I should have already been connected here, but I'm not. Okay, 2016 GMC Sierra. Any of your direct injected engines are probably going to have a similar test. Uh, like this. Now I'm going to hit system selection and I'm going to hit engine control module which is where uh, where that's going to be. Now this is the 8-speed M5U transmission. You can probably select any of those and still be okay as far as doing this exact test. As long as I know what options we got I like to pick the actual options that way uh, it just kind of eliminate any issues you may have you know if you select the wrong option. Uh, this test is going to be under actuation test it's part of the fuel system, so they've got it listed here as fuel system. Now, this is where you've got to start reading the uh, procedure, because it tells you to command the fuel pump on with the scan tool and verify that you've got 46 to 84 PSI. So I'm going to fuel pump on, and I want to view the live data, uh, specifically the fuel pressure. Right here, it'd be nice if they automatically listed the, the uh, pressure, but they don't. All you got to do is click right here. Uh, view data stream and we're going to look at our fuel pressure okay 
Okay, fuel pressure sensor is already at 77.43, so that's good. Now, I did just have this truck running while I moved it into the shade so that there wouldn't be a whole lot of glare on the screen here. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the fuel pump. And what we're looking for is fuel pressure sensor. We're going to take a look at this, this line right here just to see uh, what it goes to. Okay, so 78.3 should be between 46 and 84 PSI, and it is. Now what it says is uh, verify the fuel pressure does not decrease by more than 5 PSI within one minute. So I'm going to turn, turn the fuel pump off, and it wants to make sure that there's not a, a, a leak in the fuel system. So it doesn't want more than a 5 PSI decrease within a minute. So we're going to watch this and it'll actually, it, sometimes it'll actually go up if the engine is warm. So we're at 79.6 80. So what's happening is the engine's fully warmed up. Uh, I just finished driving this vehicle just a minute ago. So the underhood temperature is actually causing the uh, the pressure in the fuel rail to increase. So that's perfectly normal. So we're not going to wait any more than that. We already know that it's not going to leak down uh, 5 PSI within a minute. So the next step is with the engine idling. So I'm going to start the vehicle. Uh, verify that the scan tool fuel rail pressure sensor 1 perimeter is between 276 and 725 PSI. So I'm going to escape out of that, or exit out of that, I'm going to hit fuel rail pressure. And now it specifically says fuel rail pressure sensor 1. This actually has both sensors, but we'll be able to see uh, what they are. And again, 276 to 725. So we've got about fluctuating anywhere from 500 to uh, almost 700 PSI. So we're definitely good there. Okay, now it says select the fuel injector balance function. So we're going to escape, uh, exit out of this. Fuel injector balance. Now at this point, you can start doing the uh, fuel injection balance. But I like to view the data pids. So if you click right here, view data stream, it'll list the uh, pressures. And then at this point, you just go through and you hit cylinder 1. You'll feel the car stumble, or the engine stumble, because it's literally uh, closing down an injector. And you just go through all cylinders. In this case, there's eight of them. And this is where there's a little math that's going to come into play here in just a minute. If you do it too quick, it won't it won't do it. So you've got to give it just a few seconds to recover. Okay, now that we got our pressure drops, this is the pressure drop that that it noticed. So this is what it says. Okay, you're going to repeat each test like we just did. Obtain and record a pressure drop value for each fuel injector. Add all of the individual pressure drop values except for the fuel injector suspected of being faulty. Now, this engine does idle just slightly rough, but it runs like a top. It gets good gas mileage. I don't really suspect any issues. I contribute the slight rough idle to it. It is a direct injected engine. It probably needs to have the, uh, the valves and the... Uh, you know, a, a combustion cleaning. It's probably carboned up. You know, the valve, the top of the valves are probably carboned up because it is a direct injected engine, and it probably just needs to be cleaned. But if you was to, let's say you had one of these that was, uh, what's the worst one we got here? I guess that 25.8, 25.08. 
we'll just call we'll just say cylinder one is our suspected bad one so what it wants us to do is add and I got a cal calculator here and what what I like to do just to make it simple as I round up or down so that 25.08 I just put 25 31.03 31 now the 26.97 I'd round that up to 27 the 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 decimal points aren't important I mean the, the that's not going to make or break whether you got a bad injector. So we're going to, our, our suspected bad one, we're going to call a cylinder one at 25.08. So we're not going to add that one, but we're going to add 31 plus 27 plus 32 plus 29 plus 32 plus 26 plus 33 that's a total of 210 now we're going to divide that by 7 that gives us 30 now no that's the average pressure drop was 30 amongst those seven fuel injectors now it says multiply the average pressure drop by 0.2. This is an acceptable variance from the average pressure drop of 20%. So we're going to times 0.2. That's 6 PSI. So you can be plus or minus 6 PSI from 30. That would be 24. So that 25.08 is still falling within the acceptable range. So hopefully that made sense. Um, usually, if you have a bad injector, you're going to it's going to be way different than what these numbers are. So you, let's say the average was 30, you'd have one that might be, uh, you know, 10 or 15. Or, or zero you know if there's a zero pressure drop obviously that injector is either completely plugged up or electrically it's not working um, but if it's partially plugged or whatever this is a good way to uh, verify whether your injectors are flowing pretty close to equal and uh, you know in this case a six psi difference from the average of 30 is what you can be. So we could be anywhere from 36 down to 24 is uh, the way that math works out. Anyway, uh, like I say, I will put the procedure in the description. That way you can print it and take your scan tool out and do the same test on your vehicle. But anyway, that's it. That's a fuel injector balance test using the D8 BT in this case, the regular D8. The D7 might do this same test. I don't know. You'll just have to get into it and see if it's got this option. My launch and my Autel also does this test. But anyway, it's a good test to, uh, to verify your injectors. And obviously, you don't really even need to do the math. If you see that you have an injector, for instance, if this cylinder number one, if it was down to five or ten PSI or zero, you automatically know right then that that injector's no good there it's not working it's plugged up it's you know electrically not working or mechanically not working um, so you know uh, don't think you have to do the math the math is only coming in if you've got one that's slightly below spec you know it's partially plugged up it's doing its job but it's just not doing its job as equally as the other injectors then at that point you know you may or may not want to call the injector bad but if you see a, a huge difference in these pressures on one or two injectors, then then uh, there's no real math needed. You know, you know, you know that it's bad just by looking at it. Anyway, I hope that made sense. You guys take care. We'll see you in the next one.